What up, YouTube? Dark Dub coming at you from what I can only call my computer lock series this one last time. Um, come to the realization after doing all this that uh, it's so much simpler to to do it without the RAM and the program memory. And well, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk you through some concepts here and show you what it was that made me realize I could do this with the combinations in the first place and then show you why I directly went for the RAM because the RAM has one of the concepts involved that you know had it gave me the light bulb over my head as far as this concept um, but when I started uh, in this world here what happened was I decided to take the previous design that I had and I tried to uh, build it from square one uh, but improve with my, my improvement ideas and what happened was uh, my previous one at this point here was at 15 ticks already in this one it was at 5 ticks uh, this is so fast that these register before the button releases or as the button is releasing so let's go ahead and watch if you don't know if you saw that but the very last the very last uh, redstone block down here watch it move when I push that as it was as it was turning off so so I got it pretty fast okay, so what I started with was when you push a button <clears throat> you need the light to stay lit so that's what I needed to do first so we've what we've got over here is what's known as a T flip-flop let's put some dust here and go ahead and get it a button whereas when you push the button boom the light lights you got to push it again to get it to unlight and so over here at the very bottom these smooth stone and these cut sandstone are all at least the ones on the bottom are all coming out of those buttons and if you'll notice they all come this way go up and run into that exact circuit right here and so <clears throat> this these pistons here are just there to reset it so there's a reset line for all of them and then that signals brought up here sent back and then run into the lights so that's all you've got for your user interface from there it goes up to the user interface uh, T flip-flops and it splits and also goes down here it hits a monostable circuit. Now a monostable circuit will give a brief pulse for a signal given. This is on two ticks because of the delay I've got on the on the uh, repeaters there and it goes out and from this point I have to explain a few things and uh, at that point we will get into where I got the idea of this whole concept at. First thing, I'm going to talk about binary, okay? Don't get intimidated by the phrase or by the term binary. It's uh, nothing special. You probably already know zeros and ones. Uh, it's a little bit more than that, but not very much more than that. Uh, so you've got one line here can represent a zero by being off or a one by being on. Okay, so it's got two states. You add another line and you double that amount. Okay, so this line can be on or it can be off, but if these two are taken as a whole system, then you got 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. That's 4. Okay, now if you add another line, then you double the amount of possible combinations same thing adding yet another line and any amount of lines each time you have a new line you double the amount of possible signals you can send 
Now using this method you can only send one signal at a time otherwise you'll mix what the signals are but say you want to send a zero 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 one so what you would do is you would put a line across these and if you want to send a zero 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 one then you put this on top you invert it well like so and then you wanted a zero 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 one the one gets a torch right there so then when you send power here you've done that and that is called coding these lines in binary so then if you wanted to code it with zero one zero one you would then just in each of the ones you wanted to turn on you would put a torch and then when you flip it you get what you desired okay so to get this out at the other end of the line what you want to do is you want to come off of that line with a torch on the ones that got torches like so and then with a repeater off of the lines that did not get a torch that ensures that that signal hits every one of these lines at the same time. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and connect these up and we're going to put dust on every last one of them. We're going to run that line into a block here that itself gets a torch. Now what that is, is that is basically an AND gate from here except it's a NOT gate because it's got so yeah it's a, com it's a combined gate, it's basically a combination. And it's also a binary decoding because when I flip this that light turns on Okay, but we come over here and do it manually, that light will only turn on for that combination. Any other combination, that light is off. Ta-da! Okay. So what I did here is on the end of this line, all four of these lines, it runs into a block which powers a dropper which throws that block into this dropper okay which then throws signal out here and will light these redstone lamps okay and then when I flip that that'll throw all those items back into these droppers and turn those lights off okay so what I've got here is any any line that I have that that comes across I can throw this out with a quick signal and that picks it up and this is called a register now now this this line or this this code whatever you want to call it I'm gonna call it a data set the the uh, zero one zero one is saved over here nothing is on these lines but that data sets here and when you like I said you can reset it and and so that's a register it can store the information for you this over here is a RAM I have it stored differently over here I did not use droppers but I used locking repeaters so I've got Let's see. Yeah, we're going to go from left to right. So I've got a 0, 1, 0, 1, just like over there. Okay, now <clears throat> I would do that on each of these. I would have something underneath that hit all these at the same time. And then 0, 1, 0, 1. 
you can turn these and then do the next one independently so basically it's just a bunch of registers together so what you've got is on our binary over here each of these lines represents a it's called a bit it's a zero or a one each one of those is a bit so what you've got here is one two three four bits if taken as a whole that's a four bit register right there and right here it is decoded for one specific code to come out and it looks like that one specific code is zero 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 so let's go ahead and take that zero there and take that zero there and no it is for one 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 so let's turn all those on and flip all these turn that back okay so now that went and it flipped this here so basically back up here that's exactly what I've got here I've got a RAM with all the registers here and then <clears throat> when you push the button up here and it comes up it splits up to do the light and it comes down to hit this line and what this line does is that register see how it torches up to here well these ones right here are locked okay so all of those are off whereas this one should be on and it should be reading to this line well when this line gets power you see that it fed it what was in this register down here so that's basically what those buttons do they feed the code that is in each individual register to these lines okay that code comes over here and each one of these decodes for a specific code and so. I had eight right because you can't use zero 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 you're sending no signal nothing at the end will pick up so instead of having eight with three lines I had seven so I had to add an extra line for four bits to make eight so one through eight decoded right here to come over here and then do there and that's how my original worked is I would I would basically change which data set was in one of these automatically if you got it wrong three times and then instead of this button activating that one down there it would activate a different place down here because it would have a different code in the register that it activates over here now with all that I realized that you know every code that I that I fed into it though because the combination was fed over here I had to have the same number of buttons pressed like if the code was three five seven you know I couldn't change it to one two three five seven because that that has five buttons pressed instead of three so any that limited the number of combinations I could use so I came over here and decided that I knew there was a way to gate 
through the combination over here to get it to to change right so enter enter my XOR latch or my XOR gate okay. so this little guy right here from this comparator to this and this observer that is an XOR gate okay I did not put the item in there but let's uh, go ahead and do that okay so now there's an item in the bottom of those so what you got here is okay this light this this switch turns that light on okay so if if it's on that lights on okay unless you flip this switch now if you flip this switch this one has to be off for that to be on so that led me to a realization if we gate these separately throw an AND gate on there okay now what have we got now these two think of these two as the combination okay they both have to be on in order for that light to be on if they're not both on then that light won't won't work okay so now we'll call that one one okay so now one one is the combination so let's go ahead and turn that combination off so now we can change the combination by giving power here so now one zero is that combination one zero and then if you wanna change it again change it to say I don't know zero zero you can do that if you want to change it to one one you can also do that so these XOR gates the tiny little piece that was an awesome find so finding that did not it, it didn't really hit me like it should have at the time that that was the concept itself it hit me at the time that my uh, switcheroo of the data set was to be used in tandem with this and it was a bias that led me down a long well not a long path but it led me down the wrong path for a little bit but it gave me a uh, concept and this here so what I did was I tried to uh, gate a RAM into uh, one side of the inputs of these so I designed a new RAM which is read only it's considered read to uh, to take what's on these lines down here and put them in the register so that's reading and then writing would be if I had more lines up here that signal comes in and it writes to that kinda like uh, my buttons up there for the RAM each time you would push a button it would write whatever's on the register to the line so this does not write these just automatically decode for whatever I wanted to be in there so it's a read-only RAM and the reason I tell you this is because we're getting into the program memory which is what I was about to do over there um, so basically what it does I would push this button here and yeah so basically it sent uh, an item from here to there which registered here sent a small signal through here which read a code which then sent signal over here which read a second code a third a fourth a fifth a sixth a seventh and eighth and the reason why down here I have 
four lines that are white and four lines that are blue is because these four we're going to read to inside of a RAM okay and then these we're going to decode at the same time and pull up right next to the RAM and they were going to tell the RAM which register to put this data set in and that's program memory it would go from there all the way to here and it would place each code one at a time with the timing set just right to where the RAM can accept each one without crossing the codes um, and then this here would be you probably see it <clears throat> each of these lines would have an analog here so those would come all the way across uh, each one going up would have its own program memory or the black lines on top of it so there would be six of those all together all running into these sets of lines that would be right here because there would be eight of those here too so what I had was the lines were extended and I was going to bring a program memory up from below here and I was going to bring a program memory up from below into these white lines here which were going to feed into the two rams and I was going to have blue lines that came in well I was going to play around with, our, with where to put those in at exactly but they, the program memories were going to be down underneath and there was going to be a shift register right here now the shift register is the only part that I kept for my my actual lock don't worry about any of this stuff up top like only go as far as these lights here uh, all the rest of it I was just showing what I needed to do to basically trying to figure out exactly where and how to fit it in um, but so you push the button and it's like a counter so I'm gonna use that over the, what was gonna happen was you get it wrong three times and it sends a signal out and when this one lights up it would send out to read the first program memory and when this one lit it would send out to read the next one and when this one the next one and then when this one was done I was gonna gate all five of them together to get the code of zero 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 and that was going to be my sixth input for the sixth program memory but there it is now no rams no program memory one shift register only needs one more little circuit to uh... to work and then a door set up to be what activates when you get the password right and then it'll get its showcase now I learned some things while I did this uh, about RAMs I learned some things about program memory uh, I can make a lot of these things read only I can make a read only program memory to where if I want to put my lock into a bank vault I can then have a, uh, a user interface in the banker's office whereas he can have a control panel on the wall where he can change what combination uh, he can basically change the lineup of which combinations uh, like which ones in there initially he can change which one it changes to when you miss it the first time the second time the third time he can set it all up uh, and that would be the only real reason that I see for doing all of this uh, it's pra practically applicable anyway reason I will do it eventually and you will see it if you watch if you like this video go ahead and leave a like if you have not yet subscribed to my channel but like complex redstone go ahead and subscribe to my channel that's not all that I do on my channel so uh you know flip through those playlists see if there's anything in there that you do like and uh I'll catch you on the flip side. See you.